subtractive color. Now when light shines on a colored object, uh, some of the light gets reflected and some of the light gets absorbed. And for a colored object, it, uh, that reflection strongly depends on the various wavelengths of the light. So white light has photons of all wavelengths. And if that white light is shining on an object that we see as red, uh, we see it as red because uh, most of the photons are absorbed except for the ones that have wavelengths in the range of uh, the red. Uh, so uh, this is characterized by the spectral reflectance curve. So for example, for a red object, uh, it would have a very low uh, reflectance percentage in uh, most of the spectrum except for the end of the spectrum uh, on the red side. Uh, in other words, this means that the reflection coefficient uh, varies with the wavelength of the photons. Now, uh, when you are creating a color with a pigments, uh, you can make use of uh, different uh, colored pigments and mixing them in the appropriate uh, combinations uh, to produce other colors. And the very common type of, say, inkjet printing uh, is uh, using the inks of uh, cyan, yellow, and magenta. So with those uh, three uh, bright pigments, uh, plus some uh, black ink, just to uh, vary the value, uh, you can achieve a variety of colors. So uh, here you see when uh, yellow ink is mixed with uh, cyan ink, the result is uh, green. Now, the way this works is that the reflectance curve for yellow, uh, for a yellow ink, might look something like this, that uh, it does not reflect very much on the blue part of the spectrum, but it reflects everything else. And so, in that case, we see that as the color yellow. Uh, cyan uh, has a strong reflection everywhere except in the red part of the spectrum. Now, when we mix those two inks together, uh, the yellow ink absorbs uh, the blue part of the spectrum, the cyan ink absorbs the red part of the spectrum, and what we're left with is the part in between, uh, which they both reflect, and that is the green part of the spectrum. Uh, here's an example of a four color printing. Uh, you notice that the uh, red of the bird's uh, body, uh, that's where magenta ink and yellow ink are combined because yellow and magenta uh, combine to make uh, red. Uh, the part of the body that is darker, say under the beak, uh, you also spray some uh, black ink to give it a lower value. Now the rules for uh, combining these inks are known as uh, subtractive color arithmetic. So uh, the simple case with uh, these types of um, uh, printing inks would be that since, uh, for example, yellow reflects uh, red and green, cyan reflects blue and green, so when you mix them, the color that they have in common that they reflect is a green. And you can do this with uh, any of the other uh, color combinations and see that you get the results shown in this uh, picture. Now paint pigments are similar, but uh, somewhat more complex in their uh, spectral reflectance curve. So uh, here you see uh, examples of uh, natural ultramarine pigment in its powdered form uh, mixed in a uh, binding to uh, for watercolor and a nice example of its use in uh, this uh, painting by Vermeer in the uh, uh, scarf. Now with ultramarine it doesn't have a simple type of spectral reflectance curve like we see with the printing inks. In fact here we see the um, spectral reflectance curves for 
uh, natural ultramarine, which is made by uh, grinding uh, this uh, gemstone, uh, and the much less expensive uh, synthetic uh, ultramarine. They have similar but not identical spectral reflectance curves, and you see these are more complicated curves than what we had before. Uh, that al that's also why the colors uh, look more interesting than uh, uh, simple uh, printing ink uh, colors. Now, when we uh, mix, say, yellow and blue paint, uh, often the resulting color is uh, green. Now, notice that uh, because yellow and blue are additive complement colors, if we were mixing yellow light and blue light, the resulting uh, color would be white. Uh, they are on opposite sides of the white point. But uh, when you mix uh, pigments, uh, the connecting line uh, is not a straight line. It's some uh, un strange path, uh, um, unpredict somewhat unpredictable path uh, in the diagram. To actually calculate the resulting color, you'd have to have the uh, spectral reflectance curve of the yellow pigment, let's say it looks something like this, and then the spectral reflectance curve for the blue pigment of the blue paint, uh, suppose it looks something like this, then uh, when you mix the two, you have to uh, look at what do they have in common for reflection, and in this case, uh, the overlap is over in this bluish uh, green region, and so we would have this sort of bluish green. Uh, and this is since the yellow absorbs much of the blue and the blue absorbs much of the red, so we're left with this part um, somewhat in the middle. Another example would be uh, mixing blue paint and red paint. Uh, the resulting mix tends to land usually close to the uh, white-black uh, center point. Uh, by contrast, if it was uh, blue light and red light, the resulting mixture of lights would be uh, magenta. But we don't, uh, we don't get magenta when we mix uh, a red pigment and a blue pigment. If this was what the spectral reflectance curves looked like for those two pigments, you see they have uh, virtually no overlap, so we would have very little uh, reflectance. This would almost be straight ac across and at a very low level, so it would be this, this very dark, um, uh, in undistinguished um, color. Now, one thing that uh, people do to learn how to uh, mix paint, so if you're learning to uh, paint with pigments, uh, an exercise uh, you can do is to paint a color grid. So in the color grid, uh, each uh, column is supposed to be a similar uh, hue, and each row is supposed to be a similar value, and you try to achieve the highest possible saturation in all cases. Uh, this is a color grid that I painted uh, from the um, black and white scan. You see it was not entirely successful in terms of having uh, even uh, value across each row, but uh, that was the attempt. Now here is uh, something which I found useful in terms of learning to mix uh, pigments, was uh, on my grid uh, I estimated the different uh, pigments of uh, pure pigment that I was using uh, in each case. Uh, so here's where I've, I've marked them. So the alazarin yellow is approximately this hue and a high value and uh, raw umber is um, a s somewhat different uh, yellow. It's one column over but at a much darker lower uh, value. Anyway, these were my um, estimates, these nothing terribly scientific, just eyeballing them. Uh, but using this as a guide, I could establish that if there was a certain uh, hue and uh, value that was my target, then uh, 
I realized right away that the two closest pigments, say for in this example, were cadmium orange and cadmium red, and mixing those two uh, nearby pigments, perhaps with a little bit of white to uh, raise the value if needed, uh, got me close to the target. On the other hand, uh, the these other pigments, uh, say alazarin yellow and cadmium red, uh, even though the target also lies in between those two, because they are uh, farther apart, uh, mixing them uh, typically lands you in a uh, darker uh, value and uh, more importantly with a much lower uh, dull saturation or desaturated. So in uh, summary, uh, surface's color depends on its reflection coefficient at different wavelengths. That's what the spectral, spectral reflectance curve is. Uh, mixing colored pigments gives very different results from mixing uh, colored lights. Uh, and the reason is that mixing colored lights is additive color mixing and mixing pigments is subtractive color mixing. And subtractive color rules are, are different from additive color rules. So uh, you can estimate the resulting color when you mix uh, ink or paint using uh, subtractive color rules. It's more complicated with uh, paint because they have more complicated spectral reflectance curves. And uh, finally, in mixing paint pigments, uh, you tend to have more successful results in terms of maintaining uh, saturation and value by uh, mixing pigments that are uh, near each other in terms of hue and value.